Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another Doodlebug Design 6x6 paper pad tutorial. This is the Christmas Town paper pad. I don't remember off the top of my head which year it is from, but it is one of the older collections. Uh, Doodlebug tends to release their collections pretty close to the holidays, so I'm usually working on last year's collection because I'm just not that fast. Uh, but I did want to use this before it's no longer available because that has happened to me where I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, one day I'll get to that adorable paper pad and then it's been four years and I still haven't done it. Hmm, anybody else have that problem? Uh, so anyway, this paper pad, I decided that I would, well, I had the odds and ends, which are these die cut pieces from Doodlebug and they're basic, to me it kind of reminds me of like having stamped images because they're like really adorable coordinating images that are all colored in ready to go and they have like that you know little white border just like our stamps traditionally do and I decided to use those instead of using the cut aparts in part because while I did like some of the cut aparts and I actually will use a few a couple of them were just like not really what I wanted to have as a sentiment and they are the smaller ones they used to be coming they used to come a little bigger and Doodlebug is currently showing some of their new collections and it seems like they've kind of eliminated the cut aparts in that sense, like in the ones that you might be able to use as a sentiment. So I think it'll be interesting going forward, seeing how I will sort of mix things up. So here are the die cuts and there are like a hundred and like 108 or something die cuts. So I was a little intimidated by that. I was like, how am I gonna use all of these? But they are really cute. And while there's 108, like each individual snowflake and heart counts as its own die cut. I am trying to zoom in and give you an idea of what some of them are, but what I do like is they do have on the back a picture of every die cut that is available. So I'm not going to flip through all of them because you can actually see it. Sometimes it's hard to see what is in a paper pad or a die cut collection before you get it, but they, they do a nice job with that. The other thing that I decided to do was pull in two sentiments. They are from two different stamp sets. I don't think that you need to use the same sentiments, of course. Just kind of go through your collection with your die and find a sentiment that fits inside the die. I chose to use these because I'm not going to be using the die cuts, or sorry, I'm not going to be using the cut aparts, which traditionally have a sentiment on it. So I need to bring in a sentiment. And I decided to pick one Christmas sentiment and one general sentiment so that I could make some Christmas cards and some just sort of winter cards with the idea that that would allow me to donate to a wider variety of places. Like if they didn't want Christmas specific cards, my cards would still work out. And I picked a whimsy, I think it's called Quick Strips die set because there's a couple different shapes in it, but I don't, I'll, I'll try to remember it later, but basically I think I only used this one. And to make things faster, I took the die cut negative, I put my die cuts back into it with some tape, and this allows me to stamp both sentiments on two different strips at the same time. So it saves me some time and I only have to line everything up once. You could potentially not put them in the negative space, but I think with those really thin sentiment strip dies, I personally find it really hard to line them up. Of course, you don't need a misty. You could just use a stamp block. I bought it. I did that for years. I think it works fine. Just in this case, because I was able to stamp two, I think the misty actually saved me some time. And I usually complete these paper pad, like, you know, working with the paper pads over the course of several days. So being able to just keep that in my misty and, you know, just have quickly be able to put in two die cuts and, and stamp when I knew that's a sentiment that I needed was really convenient for me personally. I also pulled in a red ink. I think you could do black ink. I think that would look fine with this collection. I do like that this collection has a lot of white in it because then I feel like I can use white cardstock and big white card bases. So if I use, um, I'll link it in the video description, I use accent opaque 120 pound cardstock for my card bases. It's really, really thick and substantial. I really like it. Um, it's a little too thick for Copic coloring, but that's not really relevant to this video. And um, it means that if there's a lot of the card base showing, 
that still looks fine because it is so high quality. So I recommend that. I think it's a good price for the quality of the cardstock and the amount that you get. And when you're doing stuff like card bases or stamping sentiments, it doesn't particularly matter as much what cardstock you're using. You don't need like the super, super expensive, fancy stuff. Copic color, different story. Anyway, back to card making. Here, I picked out eight pieces of pattern paper and cut them to three and a half by, try to remember this measurement, four and three quarters this will all be on my blog there will be a coordinating blog post where i met tell you the measurements of each card so that if you wanted to recreate them or use different colors or use a different paper pad and do something similar you totally could but my reasoning here is i picked um two so i picked the eight different ones then i picked these two sheets that have this red dot paper so this isn't solid card stock it's a little bit tricky to see with on camera but it is like a subtle pattern and I took the two sheets and I cut them into three by three squares which left me eight red squares so then I took eight pieces of pattern paper cut them down to that size and I paired them with a die cut and with a sentiment so all the sentiments are the same strip it's just that some of them say bring on the Mary um, the two sentiments are from hello bluebird sets which I will link but again I don't think you you know you just use whatever you have in your stash that looks similar um, or works for you. But uh, I pulled in the, the sentiment, the red square, and one large person die cut because there were enough person die cuts to make that work. However, I realized, again, 108 die cuts, I believe it is. So I'm going to need to put more than like one person die cut on each. You could, it still looks cute. But if you ever want to get rid of all those, or not get rid of, I guess, but like use up all of those presents and candy canes and snowflakes etc this would be a good way to use them i also kind of separated out like you know santa claus i'm gonna put with the mary sentiment i'm gonna put with the holly paper but even though the background is red i don't think it has to be christmas so i paired some of them like this little girl just looks like she's in winter garb she's ice skating so i'm gonna put her with warm winter wishes a snowflake paper yes i'm gonna put her with a present but even if you don't celebrate Christmas, a lot of people during the winter have gift-giving holidays or still give gifts even if they don't celebrate Christmas in a traditional sense. So I think that's okay, but also I'll pair it with snowflakes. But then like the gingerbread man, probably not. What was nice about this collection is it did have a lot of these like really simple patterns. So here, instead of cutting them as three by three, I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to cut one at three by three and a half and one at three by two and a half. So it still uses up the complete piece of paper. And again, I can get eight of those and I can pair one of these red blocks, one of these red rectangles with each of those strips that were left over. So I cut it down to, uh, you know, that six inch length, I cut it to three and a half. Well, I have a two and a half inch large strip left from all those pattern papers I just used. So now I have another basically set of eight to work through. So I have eight red rectangles in two sizes and then eight of those strips. Again, what's nice about, well, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but like doodlebug paper, I love. Obviously, a million doodlebug tutorials here on my channel, but the double-sided paper and any double-sided paper really works well for this is that, you know, if you're tired of using one side or if one side doesn't pair as well, you can always flip it over. And so some of them, I'm going to be using the same side on the first set of cards and the next set of cards, and others I'm going to flip. So it's not going to look as much like it's exactly the same or the, as, you know, maybe as repetitive. Again, though, these cards aren't all going to the same people. Um, as many of you know, I donate my cards. In the video description, there's always a link to my card drive resources page, which shares many places you can donate cards and also jokes that you can put inside of cards, including Christmas jokes and then general snow winter jokes. So if, you know, when I finish off these cards, I'll put Christmas jokes in the ones that are obviously Christmas and then more general winter jokes and the happy holiday sentiment. So um, if you don't know how to finish off your cards, you're not sure about that, that resource is in the video description. But 
kind of forget. Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm not worried that I'm creating two of the exact same card or even eight very, very similar cards. Now, I also wanted to pull in these strips that were left from cutting all, when I did the three and a half by four and three quarter sheet. These three and a half inch by like one and three quarter. Oh, I can't even do math. Or one and a quarter? Uh, measurements will be on my channel or on my blog. Um, I wanted to use those up too. So I put those behind the rectangles. So here I'm showing you like my first 16 cards, which were only two different designs really. I'm using the same idea a lot. Um, that's no, that like, random present in the corner there just kind of fell off. I'll take that back down. Uh, so here are like the eight original cards, which I did um, all pretty similar. And then I used all the scraps from that first set to create these eight cards with the addition of the red piece of pattern paper there. So from those 16 cards, that is that what you see there in front of me is all that's left of pattern paper. Like it created almost no scraps and I've used 16 whole sheets. So if you don't want to use the whole paper pad, but you want to use up a good chunk of a paper pad, recreating that set of 16 or something pretty similar um, is a great way to really just use up a bunch. So I'm still gonna keep trying to use up a lot. Here I am going to cut these as three by two from this brown piece of paper. And part of the reason I'm doing this is I know that one of these will work well as a mat for the few cut aparts that I intend to use. And it was one of the few pattern papers that was left that I thought worked well as like a, a kind of tone on tone, good focal panel paper. Like these snowmen are adorable, but like I wouldn't be layering a bunch of die cuts over them. So here I'm gonna move back to the more traditional sizes that I typically use. All of my cards are A2 size cards, which means they're four and a quarter by five and a half. You take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, cut it in half, fold it in half, and get that size. And so since, um, as you might be able to tell, I like to really use things up and not create a lot of waste. I prefer that size because you use up the whole piece of cardstock as well. But there are a lot of fun sizes out there. The slimline card doesn't create a lot of waste because the extra piece you can use the panel on the card, but again, irrelevant. So I did decide to pull in some red cardstock. I often try to stick to just the pattern paper, but I do re recognize that many people have cards back on hand, or if you pick some pretty plain colors, it's not, you know, difficult to obtain. I don't use any super fancy cardstock. I think this is this some super thick stuff from Michaels because one time I needed some red pattern paper and to get the really good quality stuff, you have to buy a big old pack and so I still have it. There are prettier cardstocks out there. Some have like some texture and, uh, but it's just, it's not something I have a lot of so I kind of just work with whatever I have. And red seemed good because it works for Valentine's Day and Christmas. So if you don't like to keep a lot of pattern paper on hand, but you do see an opportunity or you want to keep some, I would think about those colors that kind of come up for a lot of holidays. So I'm going to design an idea of like here, like I'm going to kind of come up with this basic thing. Then, and this is what I did for all those first 16 cards too. Once I kind of come up with a pairing that I like, like, ooh, okay, this, I put the rectangle on top of this square and then I pair it with a die cut and ooh, let me use up these trees too, because I don't want to just use one die cut on a card, I'll never get through them. I can basically, and I'll pull in a sentiment strip, because again, I created a whole bunch of these sentiment strips, and I can then place them in a baggie. And you might think that's weird, like why not just, you know, finish the card? But um, my thought here is that I, well, sorry. The reasoning is that I don't have time to film all of it because I got other things I need to get done and also like I don't always have good lighting etc etc so that's not really relevant you know if you're not filming it but um, you know it's easy to take these little packs and go take them up and assemble them at a different time 
and like honestly in the past I've taken like little packs of these ready to assemble cards to the the mechanics while I was getting my oil changed or like anything you just have to kind of wait around I was thinking like um at school the parents sometimes would like line up early for the pickup line so they would be sitting in their car for 10 or 15 minutes well if you have to do something like that like bringing these and uh you know assembling them there when you're trying to do something else or like oh I need like five minutes for the water to boil while I'm cooking dinner and you have your tape and these pa card packs right there you know so it's not for everyone but I just wanted to share that because that is more my style um so kind of skipped some of those cards there but everything is linked on my blog and my uh style with these videos if you're familiar with them is to not explain every little cut that I'm making because it's it's not very interesting <laughs> for one um, and also because I would never remember every single little cut and design decision I just kind of like to explain some tips and tricks and some thoughts about why I'm doing things so you know hopefully this works for you if not sorry turn off the uh, the voiceover and just watch that me better like um, anyway I did find that there was one strip along the side of the cut apart that all the sentiments I really like. Like there's that one there that says all I want for Christmas is you. Not really the kind of thing that I'm going to send because I'm donating my cards as my really sense a little lovey, right? But this one strip on the end that I've cut off, all of them work pretty well. So I am going to design a few cards around that and again I was kind of having some forethought and chose to cut those brown pieces to something that was um gonna like kind of allow it to have a good mat like it was gonna fit the cut aparts those little tiny scraps that were left from that first set of 16 cards worked out really well for adding a tiny stripe of interest behind these cut aparts so i actually took my scraps of cardstock that were created from when i cut down those squares for the other cards and these were like the big long strips that were left i'm using those to add a little bit more interest to the brown rectangles here and there you saw i just kind of like taped it across and cut them apart to save a little bit of time uh and not really necessary but you know I, i'm always trying to like sneak in a way to save time and then i'll do something else that totally wastes time so <laughs> but i, I kind of figure like maybe it'll work out neutral in the end like if i do enough time-saving things, it'll balance out all the time-wasting things I do sometimes. No, oh, we'll see. I did have some red squares, but like, since I already used red cardstock for strips behind it, that didn't really seem to work out well for me. Um, something I did do while I was sort of distractedly blabbing about putting things in bags earlier is when you cut to four by five and a quarter, and I do this in a lot of videos, so you've probably heard it before if you've watched some of them, is that um, you have a two inch strip left. What I really like about that is if you have a two inch strip left, you can basically tape two of them together to create a new background. So I do this like in every six by six paper pad thing I ever do. I always take the two inch strips and I tape them together and I put another two inch strip on top of it. Now here, when I do that, I create these little extra pieces. So you see what I'm working with there in my hand. It looks like a, like three different pattern papers together. Well, that is the little bit that you have to trim off the bottom when you tape those four by six inch strips, or sorry, two by six inch strips together. You trim off this little like uh, quarter, or sorry, three quarters inch strip, and it has the three pattern papers with it. But I didn't want those to go to waste. Um, I'm you know really doing a good job with my scrap busting today. And so I took them and I layered them behind these middle panels that I'm creating on this card. So I'm hiding the fact that again, these aren't one long strip. It looks like one long strip because I've used a different pattern paper to sort of stitch it together or tape it together here. Um, so I'm taking advantage of that again and um, you know, using it behind the panel. So hopefully that makes sense. And it's, it could be a little bit tricky on the blog then because you'll think oh well you know when I'm cutting if, if you were to try to recreate I realize not everyone 
does this, but some people have written to me and say that, you know, they like to literally like they like the measurements because they like to go in and make the same cards. You know, maybe they do a different pattern paper pack or they mix up the, the choices, but they like to recreate the cards. Um, it can be a little bit confusing because you could be like, well, where did you get that long strip? Because there's no more long strips left. Sometimes it is piecing two shorter strips together. So here I had those two inch strips of dot paper left and I could have taken that plaid paper and covered the seam, but I had two pieces of the plaid paper and two pieces of the, um, the circle paper, the polka dots. And so it didn't really like, I would have a plaid strip left or I could use them together. So I wanted to figure out a way that I could use both of those to create two different cards. Um, so I decided I would layer it with like a really large die cut because there definitely were a few of those in this collection, like really, really big die cuts that, that snowman. All of these houses are huge, which like again, not all of this is meant for card making. So I'm sure there's other people who think those are nicely sized. And I don't think they're, like, they're bad size or anything. They just um, can be a little bit tricky to use. So I felt like, since I only had a little bit of pattern paper, it was a good time to use a really large die cut. And so here I'm making a very interesting road. <laughs> I'm basically using the plaid paper to be the road and then placing the, the buildings and a little car on it, creating a little scene there. And this, I think, is we're getting towards the end of the pattern paper. So I'm you know, trying to finish up these cut apart cards. I'm trying to make sure I use um, little strips and scraps and stuff where I can. I am again placing a lot of these in plastic bags and kind of just moving them to the side. I, I'm sure you realize I reuse those plastic bags. They're not kind of like a one use thing. Uh, I, they're actually the same bags that I store my stamps in and so they're really thick and high quality and so I don't have to worry about them ripping and I can use them many 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 times and never have to be concerned that anything is going to uh, fall out, etc. from them. So I will try to remember to link those in the video description just in case you're uh, looking for something similar. I don't, I think a sandwich bag, if you had just like regular old, you know, generic sandwich bag, they would fit a card as well. So now I have a ton of die cuts left, which is kind of what I was concerned was going to happen. And that's, you know, totally fine. Like, I'm not complaining that I have that good luck, but I'm gonna basically be going forward and trying to create cards with the, mostly the die cuts. So I have a lot of these houses. I did not use all of the die cuts and I'm okay with that. I think I got a really good value out of all of them. If I didn't have them, I don't know what would have decorated many of these cards. I think I would have had to get the stamp set and then color in all the images, which is fine. Like I had done that in a birthday video and a Halloween video recently. Their stamp sets are adorable. I love coloring, uh, but it is much more time consuming. And I think for Christmas, when people have to create a lot of cards, sometimes it's nice to see how you can create nice cards without having to take up massive amounts of time. So. Um, or there's a lot of card drives around Christmas time and a lot of people who could use some encouragement around Christmas time. So I think, you know, it's nice to be able to make a lot of high quality cards in a short amount of time. But this end of the video here is gonna be a lot of me playing around with die cuts and thinking how to use them. Um, and I am sort of trying to create scenes, like it makes sense that there's snowflakes around this tree, for instance. So, but then I tried to put the candy canes because I have a lot of candy canes left to use. However, it doesn't really make sense that candy canes are floating out of the sky, even though of course no sky in the background. Like this, and also, by the way, I am sorry that the bottom is cut off here. I, I think I fixed it on a lot of them, but it was definitely a problem. I also still have those two die cuts left because the little strip or the little like rectangles I have were brown and so are these die cuts so it didn't really work out very well to use together and I think I was out of the brown rectangles as well 
so hmm. I think uh, there's a certain point where I just gave up. I was like, you know what? I can't create any more cards. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these die cuts and I'm going to put them inside of the cards. So like all these candy canes that I didn't know how to use, I'm going to take those candy canes and I'm just going to glue them in the bottom left corner of the card. I did change up some things from when I originally uh, was messing around with the die cuts. So if you want to see what I did with those, definitely head over to the blog. You're going to see a lot more of that. These hearts, to be honest with you, um, I kind of just considered saving them for like Valentine's Day or for random things. I also had a lot of little strips left. I will take those little strips and put them inside of cards and then I'll add the joke and um, a sentiment. I did see if occasionally it made sense to add a die cut to the outside as well. Like, you know, I had these snowflakes left or these candy canes left. Here, I like that was probably not a great idea because now I have a candy cane on an otherwise winter card. So, you know, maybe not the best idea. Um, although maybe that wasn't. I did occasionally put a heart here and there, but I really did not worry about using up all of the hearts because like I said, I thought they could be used for Valentine's Day. I thought they could really just kind of sit on my desk and anytime I needed a little heart, like I'm the kind of person who also honestly buys way too many enamel hearts. I've stopped but I still have a lot left because I'm just like, oh, you know, you can always add a little heart to a card. Um, so I, when I'm gluing down these die cuts, I am using my Barely Arts glue a lot. It's, uh, I've been really, really happy with that glue. It doesn't clog up very much. And also when I am popping up a lot of my die cuts, not right now, but I did throughout the video. And when I did, I did use some foam tape this time because I was trying to use up some old foam tape, but I often take two pieces of really thick cardstock like I use for my card bases um, because I have some left over when I like uh, you know die cut images or when I color etc so I take all those scraps and I glue two layers of thick cardstock together and I use that in place of uh, foam tape when possible I just like it's basically twofold and I, I've said this in a million other um, videos where I do six by six paper patch tutorials uh, that it saves money because I'm literally using up my scraps and I love my Barely Arts glue for that because it really sticks well and I don't have to worry about it coming apart like I might with um, other other options. But um, it also is a little bit more environmentally friendly, not only because I'm using up stuff, but also because most of these cards, they're just paper like the die cuts are paper, the sentiment, et cetera, et cetera. So they could go right in the recycling bin after the person is done displaying them. You know, maybe they'll reuse it and that's great too. But I like that generally when I do these, when I do a massive amount of card making, if I can make as many of them recyclable as possible, that's great. Like that's why I would you know, rather not do heat embossing and instead stamp a sentiment with a colored ink because it's still, makes it interesting and adds a bit to it, yet it doesn't mean that it's not recyclable. So done with all of my ranting. <laughs> um, anyway, hopefully that was helpful. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more scrapbook or card making tutorials and six by six paper pad tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. I've been talking for almost 30 minutes and it's hard to remember everything I want to say at the end. I will link all of the products that I used in the video description below. I'll link you to the blog post and the card drive resources. And if I forget to share something, please always email me um, or send a message. I do look at all my comments, even if I don't get a chance to respond to them all. Thank you so much. Bye.